Is there any special those. shows or moments that stand out from that whole tour? You know, for, for me, I would say definitely getting to play the Hollywood Bowl was a yeah, highlight. Oh, I've never played the Hollywood Bowl, and that was like basically the first weekend we got to do that, and that was a, that was a highlight for me. You know, That's a great, cool little career achievement. That's yeah, cool. it's down the street, you know, the Beatles and all these famous The Doors and all these famous Hollywood Bowl shows, and, and so it's just super cool to be able to get to a feet, nice. you know, perform on that stage and kind of walk backstage and you know, imagine what it would be like and then, you know, have done, having done it. So that was really cool. And then one other show that was really amazing was um, we got to do, uh, we played Saratoga Performing Arts Center, SPAC, which is in upstate New York, uh, where I saw my first concert ever, which was Steve Martin, which is hilarious. Oh, but yeah. It was like, you know, 1977 or something, That's 78. Cool, I was a tiny little show kid. There. Yeah, so it was cool. And I got to see, I've seen, seen Stevie Ray Vaughan. I saw a bunch of bands there when I grew up jazz festivals you name it miles davis but it was cool to be able to play on that stage where i first saw like rock nice. and roll and you know kind of so yeah that was a highlight so glenn um how about for you what were some highlights for you this summer on the tour well doing the uh the european festival season was really cool uh, download festival in particular because there were so many cool acts on that day that lineup is always spectacular so we got to watch a lot of people like cheap trick and then we played our set, and it was just one of those special shows, and it came out great. I was watching the, the footage. We got uh, copies of the Jumbotron footage of that, and it was just a great day. And backstage, you have the whole dressing room trailer area, and there was all kinds of friends hanging out and all kinds of other bands that I've been into since you know, I was a little kid. So it was yeah. one of those days like, wow, I'm in a cool place right now. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely Donington, that, that, doing that festival, I think was the coolest festival I've ever done. I got to do that with Chris Cornell a couple years ago. And, it's a good and one. it was just, the coolest thing was, yeah, backstage, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you're backstage and it's all like, you know, these little kind of little worlds set yeah. up and little trailers, you know, yeah. and everyone's name and you walk by and you're like, oh, cool, man, that's Anvil and that's, you know, Black Sabbath and that's, you know, it's like yeah, it Slipknot's over here and Marilyn Manson and... So it was cool, but it was amazing. I just remember walking back and you see everyone's dressed in black. It's all these like little ants everywhere, you know? It's well, like all this those big festivals, field. all the kids are dressed in Everybody, black. You yeah. can't mistake what this is. This is yeah. a rock metal was, festival. This ain't no Justin Bieber concert, you know? It was the coolest yeah. rock festival I think I've ever done where it was no question, like what, exactly what you just said. It was just so rock and roll. It was like the perfect epitome, giant stages, the British, you know, it was really fun. Um, when we were there, the coolest thing is everyone kept coming by Cornell's dressing room to say hey to Chris, all his old friends, and it was bands like Down, you know, Phil and Selmo. And, they were there. They and, played uh, this year. That's cool. Who I love, saw them. Yep. They were great. And, like, you know, Anvil came by and, you know, Ross Halfin shooting photographs. Yeah. So it was just a really cool... It's just cool, a who's who of yeah. the industry, and it's just a big party. It was yeah. like, we probably spent more time back in that area than watching bands, to be honest, but it was just that kind of atmosphere running into friends and I, I was still pretty new on the gig so I'd see people I knew from LA and the question was asked a lot of hey what are you doing here and yeah playing with Alice you know and just a good hang overall so yeah yeah really no, cool I'm glad day. you dug it as much because for me it was a really rad uh, that was really rad we just did the US and I had a great time we did a bunch of places got to hit a bunch of you know odd places I really enjoyed like being in like Boise Idaho or being in like Billings Montana you know kind of places off the map that I haven't really spent a lot of time in uh, those places I'm finding are more fun than being in major cities because you've done them so much. I mean, for me, I like to go out and, you know, basically hit thrift shops, record stores, mm -hmm. you know, antique stores, you know, in these little villages, kind of get into town and kind of dig around. And that's kind of what keeps me sane. Go to like the art museum, you know, stuff like that. Try to make it like a vacation. Um, you know, what do, what do you, I mean, what, what, what's, what's what a typical... What do I do to stay sane? Well, let me ask you this. Let me, why don't you tell me, tell me a typical day for you, say, on this tour, what you go through briefly, like, just so everybody can kind of know what it's like for you. Well, this last run, we did three weeks in the U.S., and I was saying I have trouble sleeping on the bus. It's just the way it is sometimes. I don't want to get into taking anything to help me get to sleep on a regular basis. That's just never a good yeah. scenario. So I'll roll into town. We'll all roll into town on the bus could be five six seven in the morning i'll have to go in and get some real sleep in a bed that's not moving around right yeah. but then when i get up uh yeah maybe i'll try to get to the local mall or something like that i'll tell you what's great is when there's friends in town somebody you can meet up with that kind of breaks up the monotony of the tour you see a friendly face maybe it's somebody that used to live in la or sure. even a relative or someone that you met like uh on tour or through some gig way back you know it can be something kind of to help you get through the day a little sure. better and get friends into the gig that's always great when it's not a Los Angeles gig you can always mm -hmm. get as many people in on the list as you want that's usually you know 
what I, what I end up doing, stuff like yeah. that. Nothing too crazy. Alice golfs. Yeah. In just about every city we go to, he'll he'll roll off the bus at I, I'm always seven amazed. in the morning, ready to go, dressed up, and go straight to the golf course. It's crazy. You know, I'm always amazed at a lot of bands I tour with. No one ever leaves the hotel. They <laughs> get in and they never leave. You know, I had one band. We I just got to tour India with Foreigner, and one of the guys in the band never left his hotel room <laughs> the entire time. Granted, it's India, but still, it's like you know, it's amazing. Yeah, you're in this great place. You got to yeah. get out and check it well, out. You know, it's people, yeah. different people. You know, either they're 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 not you know comfortable or whatever. But for me, I like to get out, see things, meet people, sure. try the food, you know, see the museum, whatever. For me, that's that's what I like to do. Um, let me ask you this: Are there a lot of museums in Boise, Idaho? Well, actually, you know, I don't know if I hit any museums there, but you know, if there was, I probably would would find it. What I always love is when you go out on a tour like this where you have a bunch of bands, either it be a festival tour that, you know, like a package tour like Lincoln Park I got to do with Cornell once, oh, the right, uh, yeah. Project Revolution, yeah. which was like 15 bands. But what's cool is early on on those tours, they'll throw a big party. Mm -hmm. And so everybody kind of gets to meet each other and break the ice, you know, because otherwise sure. everybody's kind of doing their thing and it could take up to a month on a two-month tour before you actually get to meet somebody. Yeah, the ice needs to definitely get broken yeah. on things like that. Yeah, because everyone's kind of, you Party know, helps, for sure. Yeah, a party can yeah. help, because otherwise everybody's kind of got their job to do. And so, you know, it's always a bummer when you go on a tour like that where, you know, you don't really get to meet anybody until you're a month and a half in, and then you've only got a month left. Yeah. You know? So I always think it's, like, great when they do have those parties. And a lot of people don't realize it's not like you just go out on the road and all of a sudden it's one big party and everybody's hanging out. It's not always like that. You know, everyone's got a job to do. You don't see a lot of the That's other right. bands. So it depends, you know. Uh, that's why festivals are so much fun, you know, when you get to go out and do that. But With Alice, we don't get on any one package tour for any length of time. He likes to jump around, I guess. So we'll do a couple shows with Def Leppard and Thin Lizzy, and then we'll do a small handful, four or five shows with, like, Anvil. That's how it was. Let me ask really you about uh, what, what if you can run down your gear that you're using mm -hmm. on this tour real quick. I've uh, been with Mapex 12 years, so using a Saturn kit on this tour. Uh, two 22 inch bass drums 22 by 18s and then uh, I got 10 12 13 16 18 and there's a 16 on the left using their six and a half by 14 machete snare drum which just takes your head off it's a great great drum but it's got a lot of sensitivity to it and I what, wasn't what too what's sure that, what's about that, that what's the material what is that made of it's a steel drum you cool. know I, I first heard that I'm like oh, I don't know that might just be too metal but no I uh, got it under the mic and uh, it was just like the grace note sounded good but it was something you can really wail on it doesn't choke up nice so that's been great and Sabian cymbals a lot of 19 tw and 20 inch paragon and stage crashes a legacy ride which is important for that gig it's got to have that kind of 70s element of the washy ride mm -hmm. like I always think about the second verse of no more mr. nice guy the, the drummer Neil Smith great drummer that played in the original Alice band he's on the the ride in there and I kind of listen to that specific section of the song to pick my ride symbol so that's been great uh, 15 inch hats and uh, holy china which looks cool and sounds great you know what about you what do you got going for this you know for, for me I'm using all Peisty 2002 symbols you know I use a 22 ride on this tour which is a little smaller than I normally I was gonna use, say but that's, that's a smaller ride for you right? it's like trashy you know and there's a, you know a lot of wash like what you're mm. saying you know vintage sound so that worked great otherwise 20 inch mediums for crashes 15 inch cool. sound edge hats and then you know all Remo heads um, yep Remo and yep. uh Basically, I, I'm, I'm really proud of this set. I finally just got to f bring this drum set out. It's like called a Legacy Classic. I helped design with Ludwig. That's a newer thing they're making, but they're kind of basing it on some older Yeah, stuff. yeah. It's like That's kind cool. of something I've always wanted them to do, and it's been a while, and finally it all happened. But it's basically a three-ply shell with mock lugs, and it has the vintage kind of blue olive badge, which is really cool, which they haven't put on a wood drum. Well, I'm really geeking out Since here. Since the but 70s. What, what's the... the Tom heads, the batter heads on the toms. Uh, coated ambassador. I'm actually using coated emperor on the top, mm. and I was using coat uh, the suede, the yeah, uh, ambassador the suede's on the bottom, which is actually oh. actually they're white, white suede. That's different. So it's like a light little bit of finish on it. it actually, sounded really great, real nice warm vintage sound. But um, and then a, and then a black beauty or a chrome over brass six and a half Ludwig is is nice. what I was using.